can I guarantee that using this strategy will get you the best deal on any car ever? Nope, I am not that smart. But what I can tell you is that using the advice in this video will help you learn how to negotiate for your car a little bit better. Consider it Car Buying 101. Obi. Juan Kenobi, please hold me, don't show me, Obi. So just to be clear, I am not a self-proclaimed auto guru. I don't know a ton about used cars and I don't have a ton of experience in dealerships, but I have worked at a couple of them. So I have, you know, a little inside information when it does come to that stuff. I've worked at a, tradi a traditional dealership before, a used car dealership. Uh, then I've also worked at CarMax, which is a non-traditional dealership because of the no haggle pricing and other reasons. And that's actually the reason why I'm making this video today. It's because I posted a video called the 2023 CarMax Buyer's Guide, which looks at CarMax in a positive light and just walks you through that process. Okay, and I'll have a link in the description if you're more curious about CarMax and the purchasing process through that. But there are some people on there. Most people think it's useful information. I get good feedback from it. It's really got good traction. But there are some people that think I'm like an undercover agent leading lambs to the slaughter, buying cars at CarMax and ripping people off. That's not the case. I really don't care. Buy a car at CarMax. Don't buy a car at CarMax. Makes no difference to me. But the truth is, you really can get a better deal if you know how to negotiate and if you go to traditional dealerships, you know, the your local dealerships and stuff like that, they are not going to mark the cars up as high as CarMax. Now, going back to CarMax, this is not going to be a CarMax video, but I do want to say that they do a good job of putting these vehicles through inspection and making sure that they're road ready for the most part. Okay. So this is one of the advantages and the reason that I, you know, push CarMax as a place to look because they're inspecting their vehicles and they're basically getting up to a quality standard. But if you know basically a little bit, you're mechanically inclined and you know how to work on cars a little bit, not even work on them, but you can tell when a car is running fine, then, hey, you're going to save some money if you go to the, tr the traditional dealership route. So what this is going to do is kind of give you a step-by-step -step process of what you can do to better prepare yourself if you wanted to go in there and negotiate yourself a better deal. When people think about negotiating, a lot of the time, all they're thinking about is, you know, knocking some money off the top. It's more complicated than that. You can't just go in and arbitrarily say, take $5,000 off and I'll buy it because you, you don't really, you kind of look like a dummy when you do it that way. You got to have a little bit more tact than that. You got to go in with a plan. So I'm going to explain this really quickly. And then after that, we'll run through an example so you have a better understanding of it. But to me, there are three things that you, that are really important to keep in mind. Okay. And the most important really is going to be your research. You want to find out what you can afford. Okay. Find out what you can afford and then find out what kind of car that you like in that price range. And you can actually do it the other way too. You can start looking at cars that you like and then seeing that price and kind of reverse engineering it from there to find out, do I, you know, can I afford that vehicle? And then what you want to try to figure out after that is how much the dealership paid for it. Okay. So that's all bundled under the research. The second is pick a price and stick to it. Okay. Don't just pick an arbitrary price. Like I said, if you walk in and let's say the vehicle is $25,000 and you just say, I'll take it for 20, you know, knock 5,000 off. Then, you know, you got to figure out how much they marked that vehicle up because dealerships will mark it up 10 to 35%. And if you just pick a number, like if you just knock 5,000 off of the price, what it's going to do is it shows them that you've done no research and that's going to give them a better leg to stand on because these used car dealers, I mean, these salesmen, they're pretty smart. They can be pretty smart. They can be pretty slick. So if you just pick a price like $5,000, that shows them that you've done no research. That shows them that you're basically just picking a any arbitrary price and trying to get it that way. And then they're going to, it gives them a better chance to rebuttal, believe it or not, because then they know you really don't know what the trade-in value is, what the market value is and all that stuff. And they're just going to say, oh, I, I, I can't do that. That's, you know, well below our cost. I'll be honest with you. The only, the best I'm going to do is 
24,000. I can knock a thousand off because, hey, that's, that's cutting down to the bottom line. And they're going to be able to get away with that because they know you don't know that you've done no research because you're just saying, hey, take five, 10,000 off. And it shows them that you did zero research. Okay. So like I was saying, I think I got kind of lost in the mix there, but dealerships are going to market 10 to 35% off. That's, that's important to keep in mind. What's also pretty important is, and I think a lot of people know this, but you have to be willing to walk away from the deal. Okay. But we're going to lay it out. We're going to get into how to do this step by step. What we're going to do is pretend that, you know, we're going to go car shopping this weekend. And now we're going to get online because it is so easy these days. Think back 20 years, how car shopping was and how you had to get this information where you had to actually go buy a book or something like that, that had updated pricing and all that stuff. Now you can just type this stuff in and it's very easy. It's easily accessible. It's easy to get the information. So let's hop over online and let's do it. I'm a big fan of the Ford Flex, so I picked this. Like I said, what you can do, first step, find out what you can afford. If you do it this way, you look, you see that the the vehicle that you want is a $25,000, basically $26,000, okay? Now, here's a useful link. This right here is from Nerd Wallet. And this gives you an idea. Now, keep in mind, this is it's going to be different based on where you live. It could be different state to state. It could be different just because the, the uh, interest rates go up. But this right now gives you a good idea based on what your credit score is. So check your credit score. Find out what your credit score is. And if you look, it goes up or down based on how good your credit score is. Now, we're going to pick a prime because I think most people are going to fit into that prime loan. So 8.75%. What we're going to do is use 9% as a basis. But again, I'll put a link in the description for this. But this is this is a pretty useful tool. This will tell you, based on roughly what your uh, credit score is, how much you can expect your interest payment to be or your, in, your APR. So we'll stick with that 9%. So now we've hopped over to a quick auto loan calculator. You can find this online as well, calculator.net. I'll put a link in the description for this. And what you're going to want to do is take that vehicle. And what's really nice about doing it this way on a computer is that you can just copy and paste. So we're going to put our price in there. We don't need that many dollar signs. Uh, we're going to stick to a 60 month. And our interest rate, if you remember from that, shows that we should be at about 9%, which is good because knowing your credit score, and if you go in there and end up with an 18 or 12%, you should be able to talk and say, hey, rerun that or see what you can do. Because based on my credit, I think I should be closer to a 9%. I think I should be closer to a 6%, all that stuff. Cash incentives, we won't worry about. Down payment, uh, if you have some money to put down, then this is where you're going to put it. We're just going to pretend that we have $2,000 to put down. Trade-in value and down payment are pretty much going to be the same thing. Where things get hairy and confusing is if you still owe money on your current car, then you're going to have to figure out how much money you'll get you know, after you, after that bank is paid off, because if you have a car currently that you want to trade in, but you still owe the bank on it, then there's going to be a numbers game involved, which can be more confusing. So what I like to do is just go in with some kind of a cash down payment, unless you know the trade in value that you're getting, then you can put that in there. But again, if your bank still owns the car that you're driving now, it can be a little bit tricky. So long story short, let's just go with a down payment of $2,000. We're in Nebraska, so we'll put that. It gives me my sales tax and all that. Now, calculate what this says is a monthly payment of $498.10. That's when you ask yourself, okay, can I afford that? Can I afford a monthly payment of $498.10? Or do I need to step it down a little bit and look for cheaper vehicles? Or, hey, big surprise, I can actually afford a better vehicle. But this is a good first step. Now that we have this information, what we want to do is try to figure out how much we think the dealership marked that car up. And we can do that on Kelly Blue Book. But if you have another auto value website that you like to go to, hey, use that one, do what you want to do. Again, we've got all the information. These car dealerships put the VIN up here for us, making it nice and convenient. So we're just going to put in our VIN number. Go. 
Nice, we found the car. We also got the mileage down here. 44,000 miles. Boom. Next. And if you put the VIN number in there like that, it's nice. Most of this stuff is going to be automatically plugged in. So good to go. It's already got the... Uh, the car color plugged in, so we'll say yes, it does have two keys, uh, no no modifications. And uh, this is actually a great question because if you've modified your vehicle at all, that can actually lower the value. A lot of the times when you're trading in a car, they like it to be as close to factory as possible. Modi modifications might look cool, but you know that's a personalized thing. When you personalize a car to your taste, then you have to find somebody with similar taste to purchase that car. So actually making any modifications does lower the value of that car. All right. Now, did you know that KBB, who cares? We're going to continue to get our values. Have you? Oh, so uh, we don't really need to put any damages in there. We can just to kind of skew it a little bit, but let's just skip it and see where it brings us. We don't want your cash offer. Not now, maybe later. Okay, so what this places it at is between the range of 22,143 and 25,250. So what you have to think about right now is most of the time dealerships do not give Kelly Blue Book value depending on how popular that car is. Now, if there's a fast moving car that they know they're going to be able to mark up 35%, you might get at or above trade-in value. But Kelly Blue Book, the good thing about it is it gives you a good starting point. So you can go here and you know that the dealership most likely paid the low end of that, maybe even lower. But what we're going to do is go with the $22,000. We're going to say that they most likely purchased the vehicle for $22,000 because we're cutting it just a little bit short of what it says here on Kelly Blue Book. But most likely if they got it from auction or elsewhere, it's possible that they paid you know much less. They could have paid nineteen dollars for it. But again, this is for a rough estimate. We're going to stick with $22,000. All right, being that the car is 26,000 and we think that they bought it for about 22, I'm going to estimate that that's about a 15 to 20% markup. Let's go, well, let's just try 15% first. So what we'll do is 22,000 plus 15%. That says 25,300. So let's knock it up a couple percentages. 22,000 plus 18%. Puts us at 25,960, about right on the nose. So in my head right now, I'm thinking that this is marked up at about 18%. It's like I said, we went over and looked at Kelly Blue Book. We found the low end of the trade value because most of the time that's more likely what the dealership bought it for. So we know that they've got about $22,000 in it and that it's marked up about 18%. So and now, again, remember when I said that arbitrary number, if we walk in and say, just take $5,000 off of the top, they're going to think, well, that's ridiculous because I, you know, we've got more, we paid more and we're not going to take a loss to sell that car. So if they've held on to that car for a while, because how long that vehicle has been on the lot is also going to be a determining factor. If they've had it for a month, then they might be willing to get to the, you know, 10% or below. They might be willing to, when it's been there too long and they just want to get rid of it, they might go as low as 6%. They might as go, they might go as low as cost sometimes if they just can't unload it. But you have to be realistic. Keep in mind, if it's a nice car, uh, you know, but if it's a nice car, more than likely it's going to sell. There's no reason that they're going to mark it down right away. If it's the first week that the car's been there, they might not mark it down at all, but they threw some wiggle room in there. So that 18%, they expect you to probably try to ask for about 5% off. So again, using our logic, what you want to do is pick a number. So at this point, you can get a little more aggressive if you want to, but 5%, I think is going to be kind of a target goal. If you want to try to get it, you know, if you want to try to get 8% off, you know, that might be a little bit more risky. That might be if you've had your eye on the vehicle and it sat there for about a month, you might get that 8% off. But what we're going to do, we'll start with a more realistic number. I think 6% would be fair to ask for. So we're going to reverse engineer. Remember, it's 18% that we believe they've marked it up. So now we're going to take 6% off of that. So 18 minus 6 is going to be 12. 
and do our quick math, 22,000 plus 12% is going to be 24,640. Okay, so we'll take our 25,995 minus 24,640, and it looks like 1,355. 1,355 would be basically how much we've negotiated down. They've got it listed at 25,995. When we go in, we'll let them talk their spiel, but we'll say I've done some research. You know, I I think it's a fair deal for 20, 24,640. You can even go as far as to say Kelly Blue Book has it listed at about 22000 trade-in. I imagine that's about what you paid for it. This is 12% over the cost that you paid for it. I think 24640 is a good deal. Now, if that's the number that you're set with, if you actually wanted to go a little bit lower, let's say 3%, let's just say you wanted to knock them down 500. If 500 down is going to get you out the door, you still want to start a little bit more aggressive. You want to start with that and say 24,640. But if you have something in mind that you're going to be able to live with, like if, instead of 24,640, it's 25 even. If you got them to knock off $995, if you, if you can live with that, that's fine. But a better negotiating tactic, I mean, this takes patience and it takes will, is to be willing to walk away from that deal. You've already shown them that you're able to do the research. You know what they've put into it. You know what you're willing to pay. And what you can say is just like with the salesperson is, hey, here's my phone number. Take it down. Here's my name. Here's my phone number. You give me a call if this price goes down. I'd love to work with you. And then what that's going to do is give you an opportunity to go home, sleep on it, see if you want to make that decision anyway. And then you have time. You know, the ball's still in your court. If they don't call you back by the end of that day, but you still want to go in there and get that vehicle, then go back, whatever. You know, it's all about what you can live with. So if you can live with that number, if you talk them down 500, if you talk them down 995, either way, it's whatever you can live with. So this is really not all that complicated. There is a little bit of footwork involved, but what you can do in 15 minutes to an hour, I mean, it could save you a lot of money just knowing what we showed you today. And again, I'm not a guru. I don't know the front and back of this and not like the back of my hand or anything like that, but this is a very simple way to get a good idea, to get a better idea. Just do a little bit of research. But you do have to keep in mind that these dealerships are in it to make money. If they think they're going to lose any money on the deal, then they they just won't go through with it. And if you just pick numbers out of your hat because you didn't do any research, I mean, they'll be able to sniff you out quick. And they can actually turn that into an advantage for them because they know you really don't know anything about the value of the vehicle. And sometimes it's just a waiting game. If you want to wait for that car to go down in value, you can do that too. But you are also kind of taking a risk because at the end of the day, the car's value is whatever somebody's willing to pay for it. Somebody could come along the very next day, the very next hour, and buy that car for more than you were willing to, and then it's gone. It's kind of a game. But at least going into it with this little bit of knowledge, you'll have a better idea. One last thing before I go, the best time to look for cars is at the end of the month because that's when they're trying to get their monthly numbers in. They want to make sure and push out as many units as they can so they look good for their bosses and the end of the year because they're trying to clear out the previous year's inventory. Less so with used car places, but still. End of the month, end of the year, know the price and do your research. Hey, before you go, I'd really appreciate it if you took the time to subscribe to the channel. I put up new content weekly, and I really try to make it as entertaining as possible for you. When you engage with a small content creator like me by liking, subscribing, and clicking the notifications bell, it helps show us to more people and grow our channels. Plus, it really upsets my kids when they see me doing better on YouTube than they are in their TikTok dances. So at the very least, out of the kindness of your hearts, you can help me make my kids cry by becoming a subscriber. And of course, a big thank you to all of my current subscribers, especially being a channel under 10,000 subscribers. You are the real ones, the risk takers, and you will forever be my day ones a thousand times. Thank you. You made this? And you know,